I've been making art for as long as I can remember. I was uh, babysat a lot by my great uncle Freddie. He was deaf and mute, and he didn't read lips or do sign language or anything, and neither did I, so we had to communicate through drawing pictures back and forth to one another, you know, like what we were gonna do today, what was of interest to me, you know, if I had to go to the bathroom or something, whatever. Uh, we would draw pictures. So that was, I learned how to communicate with images at a very early age. I have a desire and a propensity to, to always like be learning something when I'm making, making the art. It requires like experimentation and embracing different mediums and embracing different ways to look at art or different ways to try to see the world. That's a responsibility I have as an artist. I try to make a new body of work that's gonna surprise the viewers. Some people will spend an hour to drive to a gallery or something like that. I want them to go through the doors and like be surprised, totally surprised, and worth the effort that they're making to come view the work. The exhibition was designed so that in a long gallery, one wall would be filled with landscapes, and then the other wall would be filled with portraits that are framed in what would look like a handheld mirror. So when they take that mirror and look at the image in it, it's gonna be our friend Jasmine, it's gonna be Keith, or it's gonna be Billy, but it's not gonna be the person that's looking. It's a manipulation in the simplest way, forcing you to like reside in that person's uh, shoes for a moment or two. So that in itself is a moving thing, but then they're gonna be all looking at people, people. They're gonna be ignoring the landscape. We have to have empathy for the people and we have to care for our environment. And it's an interactive show with a very traditional means of expression. I wanted to show love to these people. I had to do a good job on their portraits. Some I had to do over several times because you don't want somebody you care about to look at themselves and like, oh my God, is that what he really thinks about me? That kind of thing. Frankly, I didn't even think I could make them that realistic like I was, but I felt an obligation to do that. I mean, I could have made them stylized, semi-abstract or whatever, but it wouldn't have had that impact. So I had to put all that love into painting the paintings, and then I wanted to do the same for the mirrors. I wanted to carve the mirrors, touch everything, and make them precious as a symbol for that's how we should treat people, just in general, like they're precious. I, cu I caught myself like tearing up, uh, painting the paintings. It was sort of new to me and I didn't think I could do it. I'm, I'm glad I went through with it. You don't want to get preachy or anything like that because we're all human and we're all doing this stuff, you know? We should be able to like discuss those things. Because my work it can be, not always, very socio-political work, I don't want to alienate people with a word or an idea or a notion because it's better off that that person entertains and engages with the work without me making them put up their guards. And I try to make the work a little bit like that too. I make the work be entertaining enough and maybe funny enough that they want to engage with it, even if it's a, if it's a topic that's contentious for them. Whatever the workings of our life here is, whatever we do as human beings, good or bad, all the messiness of life, I'm like interested in that. Art itself, formally, just colors and shapes or whatever can like evoke emotions from people and mysterious ideas about the world, then that again is about us. Through making artwork and then paying close attention to how people receive that artwork, how they come to the artwork with ideas and stuff. And I'll make artwork and I'll think it means this and then somebody else will view it and they'll get something completely different out of that, that piece. So then that really inspires the notion that the art has a, has a really rich life after you create it and then 
the more sometimes the more mysterious it is, the richer the piece gets. Once it's done, it sits on the wall. If it goes in a museum, it could sit on the wall for hundreds of years. It's like Buddha. It just sits there, seemingly does nothing, but is supposed to do something really special. It's supposed to entertain for, for its lifetime, for the eternity it's supposed to entertain. So mystery is really important. It has to have that afterlife. Otherwise, you know, if people have seen everything there is to see or feel everything there is to feel for the piece, they're just going to get bored of it. They're going to take it down. It's going to end up in a garage sale or something, which is like my nightmare. So yeah, I embrace that, that notion of uh, drawing from multiple experiences, multiple ideas. Make your, just then make your artwork and then it, it'll resonate, hopefully, with people. Imagination and empathy are like one and the same. Because if you can't imagine yourself there, well, you can't create something, you know? So imagination, without imagination, there's, there's no empathy. So for an artist, I think that it's tightly entwined.